Hello, this is Hunk Marvel, and some more things have come to my attention that I find to be very annoying, so I've called this video More Annoyances. Here's the first one. Thank you for your service. Whenever someone is on a game show or a talk show or television, whatever, and they mention they've served in the armed forces, or they serve in the military or whatever, the host or whatever always says, thank you for your service. Here's why I find this annoying. I don't have anything whatsoever against people who serve in the armed forces. I have many relatives, like most of you, who served in the armed forces in the military. But why should I thank them for their service when we don't even have a democracy? We don't have rule by the majority. We have rule by Jewish oligarchs. I'll thank you for your service when you do something about that instead of fighting wars for Israel and serving the Jewish oligarchs. Now, Pat Buchanan posted a great article on how the oligarchs are really going after Donald Trump by funneling all this money to super PACs. And these super PACs are advertising on television, radio, and cable against Donald Trump. So that's the situation. I'll thank you for your service when you do something about this system. Okay. Here's another one. Bible films, whether they're on television or on the big screen, where all the actors speak in an English accent. It's kind of annoying. Why don't they use a Hebraic accent? But if you're going to use, if you're going to use a, an English accent, and since they were poor, shouldn't you use Scouse accents rather than proper English accents? It's like Jesus would say, that he who has no sin cast the first stone. Shouldn't it rather be more like, that he who has no sin cast the first stone. I mean, they were poor, weren't they? Here's another one. When people say something was pre-planned or pre-programmed, pre-approved, why don't they just say planned, programmed, approved? How could something be pre-planned? Why don't you just say it was planned? Oh, this, this attack was uh, pre-planned. Uh, how is that different from planned? What's the difference between a planned attack a planned bombing, a planned terrorist attack, and a pre-planned terrorist attack. I would love for somebody to answer that question. Maybe if you know, you could leave it in the comments section to enlighten me. Oh, this, this is pre-programmed. What does that mean? pre -pro You programmed it before you programmed it? Makes no sense. Here's another one that really pisses me off. Whenever somebody says that the ancient Israelites, or specifically Jesus Christ, could not possibly have been white. Saying biblical or ancient people in the Middle East were not white. Even though their depictions on Egyptian uh, artwork show them as being white, fair skin, blonde hair. Now here's the reason why this is so stupid. Have these people who say Middle Eastern people could not be white, have they never seen Middle Eastern people? A lot of them today are white. Look at President Bashar al-Assad of Syria. He's white. His wife is white. But haven't these people ever heard of demographic change? Look at Detroit in the 1950s. It's mostly white. Today, it's mostly non-white. These people play dumb and act like they've never heard of demographic change. But according to the Bible, King David had ruddy skin. And the name Adam means of a rosy countenance. He had fair, ruddy skin. But they play dumb and act like Jesus couldn't have possibly been white. Here's another one. Geico commercials 
where they use non sequitur humor. Non sequitur humor is where they say something and then show how ridiculous it is. And then they say, then you go to Geico. That's what you do when you want to save money. The two aren't connected. South Park did an episode on this brand of humor. And it really sucks. It's not funny at all. Non sequitur humor. It brings stuff up and show how ridiculous it is to get you to laugh, to get your attention, to sell the product. It sucks. Here's something that is really inevitable with most television channels. They start out cool. They start out with with a special a specialty like American movie classics, which used to just show old movies. But then eventually they realize they think they could make more money through their market research by just being like every other channel. Because the market research is going to show the same thing for every channel, that we could make more money doing this. So they'll show anything on American movie classics. Uh, American movie classics, MTV, all these channels, they eventually are, all become alike because of market research showing we can make more money if we have this kind of programming. So they all become homogenous. This is a fairly recent uh, revolting development. Now, when I was growing up, this is what Brawny looked like, the Brawny paper towel logo. Then they changed it to this guy. Then a few years ago, they changed it to this guy. And, you know, I don't have, really have a problem with this. But then they change it to this. Where does face go? Now, here's the explanation for it. It appears that the people that run Brawny are getting political. Brawny features strong women in flannel for blah, 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 for some campaign. Strength has no gender. They show, the, show these prominent women. And then it says, the move comes just a few weeks after Brawny rebranded with the help of San Francisco agency Cutwater, opting for a new look for the iconic Brawny man. Yeah, they cut off his face. It's a new look. Shoppers no longer see a full-length image of the ultra-manly flannel-touting mascot. With the launch of the Stay Giant campaign, the man's head is now cropped off to make him appear giant. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's why you did it. You did it because you don't want to show a white man being a paragon of masculinity and strength. All of a sudden, you can't see the brawny man's face anymore. Because we're a diverse culture now. It might offend non-white men. You can't show that. Here's another one. All these bands and music artists, even in, in commercials, using the whoa course. You know what I'm talking about. The whoa, whoa, oh, shut up. It's just so annoying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shut up. It just goes on and on. So you see what I mean. It's just so annoying. And in, in an earlier video, I talked about how only three companies control most of the music. Remember the acronym WUSS, Warner Brothers, Universal, and Sony. Now music's homogenized. Here's one that's particularly annoying. White men who joke about black men having bigger penises. Do these idiots not realize that you're going to make women less attracted to you? Either you're gay or you're stupid. You're too stupid to realize that spreading this myth will make women less attracted to you. Or you're gay, therefore you don't care they'll be less attracted to you. But anyway, in any study where they actually measure the penises, they find that Northern European men are the largest on average. And this, this article talks about it. Uh, smallpenisfacts.com? I, I don't know. 
but they're too stupid to realize th that spreading this myth will make women less attracted to them. Have you watched Family Feud lately? It's really gotten raunchy, hasn't it? They purposely change the questions so that people will be forced to give dirty answers. Name uh, the first part of, the, of a woman you touch to get her in the mood. Um, that would be the lower front of the or the vagina. Yeah, tell me on the prayer. So he pretends to be. He pretends to be so shocked. Well, what did you think was going to happen when you asked questions like that? And then the acts all he acts all shocked. What's going on here? Why does why does our everything in our culture have to be run through the mud? Through the sewage. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's like television across the board. The only oasis from all of this sewage is like the Hallmark Channel. That's one of the few that aren't controlled by the ruling class in this country. The Jews. There's another show called uh, Broad City. That ha on Comedy Central features two Jewish women and in the opening scene of that show one girl is talking to the other girl and they're both talking to each other on their computers by Skype or something and at the end of the scene it reveals one of the girls was in the middle of coitus with her black boyfriend while talking to her girlfriend over the computer it's just more sewage from our ruling class for the guys to turn us into disgusting creatures. The disgusting creatures they think we are. You should be very concerned. I'm probably, this is the last one, I'm probably going to piss off some women. But ladies, this is not attractive. Okay? No man in history, no normal man in history has ever been attracted to a woman because she grows her nails long, her fingernails long. Okay? This is not attractive. What's going on here? Why do women think that this is going to attract men? And what man would be attracted to this? And plus, you just have a lot of dirt and wax underneath these nails. It's disgusting. I don't want to be touched by this. They look like claws. They look like talons. They look like weapons. No man's attracted to this. Look at this. So ladies, do yourselves a favor and don't put, go through the trouble of growing your nails like this. It's a real turnoff for me. And since I'm, I consider myself normal, it's probably a turnoff to most men. It certainly isn't a turn on. So there you go. The second installment of Annoyances. Hopefully, I can contribute to society by putting an end to all this silliness.